For those of you who may not know, I have my own business called The Art of Ecology, whose mission is to build visual connections between people and the environment or the natural world through art. I can do that in a variety of ways. I have lots of educational programs and things like that, but I was wondering how I could combine the various aspects and passions in my life, such as art, science, and the nerd world to bring some education because that's a whole untapped audience that I've got. So I created something that I think is pretty cool. Well, I'm in the middle of creating it. But those of you who may not know, I am a huge, 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 huge Dungeons and Dragons nerd. Not only do I DM multiple campaigns with lots of lore and world building, things like that. But I also play in some as well. And being a huge biology and science nerd, plus a Dungeons and Dragons nerd, you can bet that my worlds that I create are filled with all sorts of environmental and natural wonders. And I love it when I can really think about how a monster fits in the environment that my party is in. And I thought, well, actually my husband thought of it, so kudos to him. But I thought, why, or he thought, again, take, I'm taking credit where credit is not due, but he thought, why not combine my environmental education passion with my passion for Dungeons and Dragons? And not only the environmental education aspect, but my botanical, my evolutionary biology, my more sciencey background with genetics, evolutionary biology, morphology, things like that. So I am in the middle of creating a poster for people with that sort of mentality of their D&D nerds, plus they love the scientific world. And this is going to be a perfect holiday gift for your, for your DM, your GM, your party members, anybody who loves D&D and science. So let me give you guys a sneak peek here. Ta-da! This looks crazy. I know, it's bonkers. There's all sorts of things. It's insane. What is it? This is a poster that details the taxonomic classifications of D&D monsters. So this is called a phylogenetic tree. And what that means is we take a look at where life starts and how it has branched since, or evolved, adapted, changed over time. Perhaps it's been cursed. It's been really weird to combine the real world with the magical nerd world and try to scientifically suss out how things have changed and how their genetics would change with magical traits. So that's been weird, but fun. So I have, oh my goodness, look at all of these notes and papers where I went through my books and also just D&D reference guides of Volos, Xanathars, and the Monster Manual, of course the Monster Manual, and the Player's Handbook as well to go through the various monsters and even the races as well to kind of take a look at how things have changed and adapted and evolved over time. So you can see that I start down here with something called Elementalia. And what that is, is in the Monster Manual, the elements, the four elements of fire, air, water, and earth, it is even said in here that they are the building blocks of the universe. So of course it makes sense to start with that. But then we can look at breaking things down into prokaryotes and eukaryotes. These are real world scientific concepts as well of prokaryotes being more like the single cell masses, little bacteria, things like that. So oozes, jellies, puddings, things like that could fit in there pretty well. Then you've got eukaryotes, which include beefy people, creatures, things, lots of cells like us. Starts with fungi and plants. And of course, you can take a look at all of the different myconids or fungal molds, things like that, 
slime molds, the veggie pygmies. You can look at the plants of, well, here's blights. You've got your needle vine twig blights, and then you've got your things like your tree ants and your awakened shrubs. They all seem to be like plants. However, when you look at how the monster manual reads, you can find out that they're created in different ways. So they would have evolved differently or separately. You've got plants that have been cursed or blighted, and then you've got plants that have been awakened. So you can take a look at different taxonomy. We've got mollusks and the Lophotrochozoa and Ecgisozoa. We're breaking in towards the Animalia. I did have to create a whole new sort of uh, classification called Subterraformidae because I found things that fit in the arthropod category of having an exoskeleton, jointed legs, things like that, but they didn't quite fit in Araniae of the arachnids or the hexapoda with their six legs because these guys only had four. You've got your Ankeg, your Rust Monster, and your Umber Hulk, and they all share that exoskeleton. They also all live subterra underground. A lot of times you can find them in the underdark. We've got our crustaceans, our myriapoda, which includes the mini leggers, so anything that looks like a centipede, really. Then we can continue on. We've got our echinodermatas with giant starfish. We've got our nathostomata, or jawed creatures, and that would include your fish and your tetrapods, which tetrapods are more of the animals like us. We've got our amphibians, the legs, they're so cute. Our reptilia, and as you can see, I'm in the process of making this. So it's not available for purchase yet, but as soon as I am done, like literally the moment that I am done, this poster, this 20, uh, yeah, 24 by 36 inch poster, is going to be available for pre-order so this is a great thing if you're looking for holiday gifts get that in advance pre-order it and as soon as it's back from the printer it's going to get shipped directly to you this is a perfect gift for your party for your dm if your dm's interested in world building and understanding how the monsters in their world are related to one another or how they would be found in different areas how four meets function or when you look up more at the hominidae or now you're getting into more uh, humanoid sorts uh, and then you have your homo sapiens these are your homo species that would include things like your humans your elves uh, dwarves as well you might find out that wow harpies are actually a derivative of an elven species based on what it says in the monster manual an elf was um, granted this beautiful song magically but that song was kind of used in a sad kind of dark way and that harpy fell into despair and darkness and from that elf came your harpy so you could kind of as a DM create new world building opportunities and ways to connect all of these different animals to be able to find out that dragonborns and half dragons are related to the turtle race because they're both in the reptilia family. One is a testudine and one would be in the squamata or draconid um, grouping. So it could be an interesting little world building technique. And if you're a player and you want some behind the scenes sneak peeks at the monsters that your DM might throw at you, this poster could be pretty cool. Now you may see that there's a ton of empty space on here right now. We'll, we'll build things up as I add the, the species in from my list, but in some of these extra big spaces, up in the corner, down above the prokaryotes, I also do scientific illustrations and I use those illustrations to highlight often its pollinator and plant relationships 
but I'm started breaking into the D&D fan art world and adding scientific illustrations of these creatures. I can't add all of them, there's not that much room, but adding some of the main ones so you can kind of get an idea of why they're classified in that way. You can look at that artwork and be able to say, oh, tetrapoda, four, tetra, or hexapoda, ooh, six. Oh, they're all insects, that's cool. And you can kind of visualize that, hence the building visual connections to the natural world. So I'm really excited to add all the species, add the illustrations in there, and make this available for pre-order. You can go to my website, it's www.theartofecology.com, and you can then click on the shop button. That will take you to all the different products. You can check them all out. I actually do for those other D&D nerds that love Not Another D&D Podcast, I do. I am in love with Pawpaw, the character. So I created a scientific illustration that highlights different anatomical features of Pawpaw. So here you can show your love for NADPOD. Great podcast. Go check it out. It's on Spotify. I love it. Or Patreon. Um, you can also support a small business like myself. And a portion of the proceeds for any, literally anything on my website goes to wildlife conservation and habitat preservation. So you can, in the meantime, while you're waiting for the pre-order to arrive, you can snag your NADPOD inspired paw paw anatomical sticker, or you can check out other things. And you can also see, I will be uploading this poster to illustration prints. So you can check out the other illustrations that I've got going on and see your pre-order up here. It'll take a little bit of time to get there since I have to finish this and then send it off to the printer and then get it to you. But you'll be able to tell your party that you've got something cool waiting for them for Christmas. So this holiday season, snag this super cool item at www.theartofecology.com and this year in 2020 it's been super weird I know we all feel it but I do hope that for the last couple of weeks of 2020 that you will be rolling with advantage the whole time thank you for supporting me